Loyola is off to the Atlantic 10. If you're new here, I go through slides quick, otherwise you'd have an hour-long video. So if you need a longer look at the data, hit pause. Loyola has a 16,000 enrollment, 150,000 living alumni, a $710 million endowment, and they're ranked 103 in U.S. News. The Ramblers' nickname originated in 1926 as Loyola football was rambling across the country without a home field. Loyola has a five-year Ken Palm of 74, an all-time winning percentage of 714 in the NCAA tournament, and they were the 1963 national champions, making history with four African-American starters, defeating the two-time defending national champ of the Missouri Valley, the Cincinnati Bearcats, 60-58 to in overtime at Freedom Hall. Part of Loyola's move is institutional alignment. The Valley had five privates and no Catholics. The A-10 has 10 privates and seven Catholics. Here is a alumni distribution map per the Wall Street Journal database. By moving to the A-10, Loyola connects with their number two alumni market in New York, as well as a top five alumni market in D.C. Loyola co-founded the MCC in 79, left the horizon in 2013, and will leave the Valley for the A-10 in 22. Loyola will become the 11th private and 8th Catholic in the A-10. Loyola is ranked 103 in U.S. News, 220 in Forbes, and 187 in Shanghai. This slide shows the MSA ranking along with market competition and airport accessibility. Loyola will be the 12th A-10 team in a top 45 market. This slide breaks down athletic budgets into scholarship money and money left over after accounting for scholarships. UMass has the highest athletic budget thanks to FBS football and high-level hockey. After isolating scholarship money, the next highest athletic budgets are Dayton, VCU, and Richmond. All A-10 men's basketball budgets rank between 61st and 135th. Dayton is number one, followed by SLU, VCU, and Duquesne. For rolling three-year attendance pre-COVID, Dayton towers over everyone, followed by VCU, SLU, Richmond, and Rhode Island. Here are the five-year Ken Palms before Loyola's move. Of note, had the Valley retained Loyola and merely added Murray State, the Valley would have leapfrogged the A-10 into the number seven spot for five-year Ken Palm. But with Loyola making the switch, the A-10 widens the gap, and the Valley falls from eighth to tenth. Several current A-10 teams have gone deep in the NCAA tournament in recent history, though a handful of these were in other conferences like the SoCon, Colonial, and MVC. The A-10 has been trending downward slightly and hopes the injection of Loyola can add bids and wins. Here is a member comparison slide of the A-10, starting with the school profile, then enrollment, endowment, their highest academic ranking between U.S. News, Forbes, or Shanghai, their Carnegie Research classification, their MSA ranking, their level of market competition, a judgment call by me whether it's high, medium, or low, their airport accessibility, their athletic budget, how much of their athletic budget is scholarship money, and how much money is left over in their athletic budget after accounting for scholarships, their men's basketball budget, and rank, followed by three-year attendance, five-year Ken Palm, their number of NCAA tournament appearances, and how many of those appearances were since the turn of the century. One thing the MVC has going for them, they are one of seven leagues where every member has won a NCAA tournament game. Another thing going for the MVC is their track record in the NCAA tournament. The Valley stacks up very well with their peers, whether it's the past 5, 10, or 15 NCAA tournaments or subtracted schools who have left. The loss of Loyola takes a hit to the rightmost green bar, but the MVC still compares favorably. The Valley can also tout its final on CBS, where it's the 7th highest rated championship game the past 4 years. Ratings aren't apples to apples because network, time slot, and competition are factors, but you have to think CBS is pleased with the MVC's ratings. For the remainder of the video, we'll take a look at 10 theoretical candidates. Murray State, UTA, UMKC, and UIC are heavily rumored by credible sources. Milwaukee and Omaha were finalists four years ago. Northern Kentucky and Wright State are solid programs within five hours of majority of the league. Little Rock is rumored to be on the outs of the Sun Belt, and they're closer to Missouri State than the whole NBC. And to round out an even number at 10, Denver is a financially loaded private school 
who fits the MVC president's targeted profile of a booming market. Denver and UIC have monster endowments. UTA and UIC have massive enrollments. One thing leagues might be looking at moving forward is the increasing revenue from the academic fund distribution. To earn an academic credit, a school must meet one of three criteria, 985 APR, 90% GSR, or their student athlete FGR, exceeding their student body FGR by 13%. If I'm doing the calculations correctly, every school would have checked the box but UTA, but these are fluid year to year, as institutions Denver and UIC are the strongest academically. Denver is 93 in U.S. News, and UIC is 103 in U.S. News and 63 in Shanghai. UIC, UTA, and Milwaukee are Carnegie One research schools. Per Sports Aviation on Twitter, these are the airports teams generally fly in and out of in their distance from those airports. So, for example, Murray State is 49 miles from Paducah Airport. Here are the MSA and DMA rankings. Murray, Kentucky is not part of a MSA. Murray is in a microstatistical area. Murray, Kentucky does belong to the Paducah DMA, but that is a very fragmented market. This slide shows the market competition within those MSAs. Denver and Omaha have hockey nets because hockey is the flagship sport at both those schools, and its season runs concurrent with basketball. This slide shows the population trends from 2010 census to 2020 census. Many Valley schools are in stagnant areas, leading to the thought process from MVC presidents of importing students from booming or big markets. Valparaiso is in the Chicago MSA, but since I'm already listing the Chicago MSA for UIC, as an exercise, I've calculated the total populations for Lake, Porter, Newton, and Jasper counties in Indiana for a hypothetical Northwest Indiana measurement. And that hypothetical Northwest Indiana MSA would be roughly the same size as Des Moines. Moreover, this slide shows undergraduate full-time enrollment from 0910 to 1920. Valley presidents are working desperately to fix their enrollment trends. That's why Chicago and Dallas-Fort Worth are so critical for them. Using the Wall Street Journal database, roughly 40% of Valparaiso alumni are in the Chicago MSA and 5% in Indianapolis. Indiana State sends one in every four alumni to Indianapolis and about 6.5% to Chicago. Indiana, Illinois, Ohio, and Missouri are the top four feeder states for Indiana State undergraduate students. Texas is number seven. Evansville sends almost 11% to Indianapolis and almost 5% of their alums to Chicago. Bradley sends one in every three alums to Chicago and 3.3% to St. Louis. Illinois State sends over 45% of their alums to Chicago and over 2.5% to St. Louis. As a prime example for why Chicago is kind of the lifeblood for some of these MVC schools, Cook County and the five bordering counties of DuPage, Will, Lake, Kane, and McHenry account for 58% of Illinois State undergraduate students. When it comes to top feeder states, the top four are Illinois, Wisconsin, Indiana, Missouri, and Texas is number five. One in every four Southern Illinois alumni go to Chicago, and one in every eight Southern Illinois alumni go to St. Louis. Even though Little Egypt is five hours south of Chicago, Cook County and the five bordering counties of Will Lake, DuPage, Kane, and McHenry still account for a quarter of Southern Illinois students. The top three feeder states at SIU are Illinois, Missouri, and Indiana. Texas is number seven. And interestingly, Kentucky is only number eight. Roughly one-third of Drake alumni end up in Des Moines, and about 11.5% head to Chicago. Des Moines is the number one location for Northern Iowa alumni at 17.1%. Chicago is the number two location at about 3.5%. The top states for Northern Iowa alumni are Iowa, Minnesota, Illinois, Texas, and Colorado. One-third of Missouri State alumni end up in either St. Louis or Kansas City, with St. Louis taking 20% and Kansas City taking 13%. The top feeder states for Missouri State first-time undergraduate students are Missouri, Illinois, Arkansas, Kansas, and Texas. Putting together all that information from the Wall Street Journal database, we see how Chicago is such a big vessel for these schools to reconnect with alumni as it is home to 45% of Illinois State alumni, 39% of Valparaiso alumni, 33% of Bradley alumni, 24% of Southern Illinois alumni, 11% of Drake alumni. St. Louis is home to 20% of Missouri State alumni, 13% of Southern Illinois alumni. Indianapolis has a similar effect with the Indiana schools and Des Moines with the Iowa schools. 
Kansas City is home to 13% of Missouri State alumni. Dallas-Fort Worth has a 1% share of alumni of every MVC school. Same for Denver with the exception of Indiana State. Milwaukee has above a 1% share for three MVC schools, Cincinnati and Louisville, Omaha and Minneapolis St. Paul for two, and Nashville and Detroit for one. Denver has the highest athletic budget of all the candidates, but that's been on a lot of sports other than basketball. Omaha is second, but that's inflated by hockey. So the top athletic budgets of the non-hockey schools are UIC, UTA, and Murray State. Otherwise, the other five candidates would not rank in the top nine of the MVC. Wright State has a men's basketball budget that would rank top three in the Valley, UIC in the upper half. Murray State and Northern Kentucky's men's basketball budgets would fit in the Valley, but the remainder of the candidates would be outside the top nine in the MVC. A common talking point is who is the next Loyola? Well, given Loyola's location and wealth, in all likelihood, there's no way to replicate another Loyola. But one thing we can look at is how these candidates are spending today compared to Loyola in 2013 when they were a Horizon League member, not knowing that they would be in the MVC. We take Loyola's men's basketball budget in that year and factor in inflation to give us the equivalent budget to today. And UIC is spending identical today to what Loyola was back then, accounting for inflation. Wright State is spending 14% above that level. Everyone else is 10 to 52% below. Using the database on the Knight Commission on Intercollegiate Athletics, here's a chart breaking down the revenues between school funds, student fees, and what I call non-allocated revenue, which is everything that isn't school funds or student fees. I have a hockey net for Omaha to signify that their non-allocated revenue is inflated by hockey. Otherwise, Murray State has the highest, and it's important to note that the Knight Commission only has these numbers for public schools. And in this graph, the orange is non-allocated revenue, the dark blue is student fees, and the light blue is school funds. Using that same database, here are the numbers for ticket sales, donor contributions, and sponsorships and licensing. They all add up to a cumulative number that I call self-generated revenue. Omaha has the highest, but once again, that's inflated by hockey as they nearly triple men's basketball attendance. In fact, Omaha has gone multiple years selling out every game in hockey. Otherwise, Murray State has the highest ticket sales and self-generated revenue among the candidates. The orange represents ticket sales, the dark blue donor contributions, and the light blue sponsorships and licensing. Here are the three-year rolling attendance average pre-COVID. Murray State's attendance would rank top four in the Valley. Wright State would be right in the middle. Northern Kentucky would fit. Otherwise, the remaining candidates would rank below the floor of the MVC. This slide shows the 10-year Ken Palm. Murray State would be top three in the MVC. Northern Kentucky and Wright State and UTA would be middle of the pack. Everyone else would rank below the Valley Four. Here are the NCAA tournament bids and wins. And in parentheses, it's divided between pre-85 and post-85 when the tournament expanded to 64 teams. Murray State has the most bids. Bradley has the most wins. But when you narrow it to wins post-85, Northern Iowa and SIU are on top, followed by Murray State. And winning in the NCAA tournament is important because it generates $2 million in counting in future years for your conference. Here's a one-sheeter comparing the candidates. The first three columns are ticket sales, donor contributions, and sponsorships and licensing, adding up to the fourth column of self-generated revenue. The fifth column is non-allocated revenue, which is the revenues after school funds and student fees have been subtracted, then athletic budget, then men's, bas men's basketball budget and their rank, then airport accessibility, then their U.S. News ranking and their Carnegie Research classification, endowment, enrollment, their undergraduate full-time enrollment and 10-year trend, their MSA ranking and 10-year trend. The next three columns are how many MVC schools have above 9% of their alums in your market, then 3 to 9%, then above 1%. And the final columns are three-year attendance, 10-year Ken Palm, and NCAA tournament bids and wins. Omaha would have a tough time getting into the MVC because they have a men's basketball budget that's outside of the top 300. Little Rock's problem is location and demographics. No MVC school has 1% of their alumni in Little Rock. And so with Little Rock being out of the footprint and not having any real connectivity to MVC alums, they would need to be a big booming market to compensate for that like Dallas-Fort Worth. So it's something that is not Little Rock's fault and it's not something they can really fix. Little Rock does have potential as a program as they're hitting that sweet spot with their market size. The Little Rock market is close to as big as you can get with pretty much no market competition 
So if Little Rock were to ever become a juggernaut among mid-majors, they could really dominate the sports dollar. Kansas City is appealing to the MVC because they have a healthy enrollment, strong academics. It's a hub for Missouri State alumni, and it's a desirable recruiting pipeline for the MVC. But the risk is their fan support, their historical track record on the court, and their budget and ability to generate revenue. They have the lowest ticket sales of all candidates at 115000 If what is happening with Valley expansion in 2021 was happening back in 2011 or 2006, Milwaukee would be in the MVC because Milwaukee offers pretty much everything that you would want. Strong academics, healthy enrollment, good market that adds a city and state that would be valuable territory for MVC recruiting both for general students and student athletes. And they were really good in the Bruce Pearl and early Rob Jeter years. Going to a Sweet 16 under Bruce Pearl, winning an NCAA tournament game under Rob Jeter, and in 2011, winning the Horizon League, being the one seed and hosting a sold-out Mecca for the Horizon Final. They would lose to Butler, who they actually swept in the regular season, and Butler would go all the way to the national title game. Unfortunately, Milwaukee's program has imploded in the last 5-10 to 10 years, and that has had a trickle-down effect on their budget, and their revenue, and their ticket sales. Wright State is a very solid basketball school who would compete in the MVC year in, year out. They have an impressive men's basketball budget that ranks 129th nationally and leads all the candidates who would be top three in the MVC. They've been consistently good for a long time and have strong fan support dating back many years. And they've shown an ability to poach coaches from good programs like South Dakota State. Working against Wright State are factors that are out of the fans' control and out of the basketball program's control mainly the financial mismanagement by previous administrations. And in a time of market-driven expansion where the NBC presidents are trying to fix the demographic issues of their league, Dayton is probably not the recruiting alumni market that NBC presidents are targeting. Denver is a very wealthy private school with a monster endowment that leads all candidates and would lead the NBC. They're a top 100 school academically, and they're in a top 20 market that's booming in population growth and Denver's enrollment is growing accordingly. It's also beneficial that eight MVC schools have at least 1% of their alumni living in Denver. Denver also has the highest athletic budget of the MVC or any of the candidates, and they've won 12 Director's Cups in the last 13 years. What's working against Denver is that they just don't seem very committed to men's basketball. Their priority is on other sports, like hockey, where they've been a blue blood since the late 50s. And like stated with Omaha, it's very rare for schools without Power 5 or Big East resources to sustain success simultaneously in hockey and men's basketball. And another thing to keep in mind is that expanding into Denver might not have the intended effect of drawing more general students as Colorado students typically go west. Northern Kentucky plays in one of the best mid-major arenas. They're in a top 30 market. They have strong fan support. They've had a 135 Ken Palm and 686 winning percentage post-transition, and they're located within about five hours of seven MVC schools. The biggest thing working against Northern Kentucky is probably that they're too far east for Drake, Northern Iowa, and Missouri State recruiting for general students, and those three schools seem to be playing a big role in expansion. UT Arlington is a good school academically with a massive enrollment. They're in the number four MSA in the country. And if the Valley were to add UIC and UTA, suddenly they would be one of four leagues across the country to be in two of the top four MSAs. UTA has been expanding rapidly as a school, and at least 1% of every MVC school's alumni reside in Dallas-Fort Worth. UTA has a healthy athletic budget, and they opened a $78 million arena in 2012. Working against UTA is the very high market competition and their fan support. They would also need to raise their men's basketball budget, which is currently outside the top 200. Like UT Arlington, UIC is also facing extreme market competition, and UIC could use a boost in fan support and ideally would fix their on-the-court product. But despite all that, UIC might be a must-have for the MVC as many Valley schools survive on the Chicago pipeline. Many MVC schools need as many students from Chicago as possible to survive. Illinois goes back and forth with New Jersey as the biggest exporter of college students of any state in the country. And the biggest recipients are Indiana, Iowa, and Missouri, which happens to be the MVC footprint. Even though general student recruiting is the driver, it's not just that. 
It's also that Chicago basketball recruiting is similar to Texas football for recruiting. UIC as an institution has a massive enrollment, a huge endowment, very strong academics, 103 in U.S. News, 63 in Shanghai, R1 Carnegie Research School. Their full-time undergraduate enrollment has grown by 28% over the past decade. Seven Valley schools have over 5% of their alumni in Chicago, and UIC's athletic budget would rank fourth in the MVC, while their men's basketball budget would rank fifth in the MVC. And as previously stated, their men's basketball budget adjusting for inflation is identical to Loyola's men's basketball budget when they joined the Valley. And my number one candidate, Murray State. Things that might be held against Murray State are academic rankings, airport accessibility, market, and demographics. They don't really fix the demographic problem that MVC presidents are desperate to rectify. They don't boost MVC recruiting, and the SIU president could say that they compete with Murray State for students. But with the loss of Loyola, the need for Murray State has been heightened. The Valley needs Murray State in conjunction with Belmont to remain a top 10 conference. Murray State travels thousands to the OVC tournament, and they're located just over three hours from Arch Madness. Their athletic and men's basketball budgets fit in the MVC, and they have the highest self-generated revenue of the non-hockey school candidates. In fact, their ticket sales tripled all the candidates who were not hockey schools. Murray State's three-year attendance would rank top four in the Valley, and their 10-year Kempom would rank top three. The Racers have been to 17 NCAA tournaments. They're among the top 50 all-time winningest programs, and they've sustained success through several coaches. Gottfried, Cronin, Kennedy, Prom, Popeye, Cannon, Payne, Morant. It doesn't matter what player or what coach Murray State loses. They just have a culture of winning. They've had 29 consecutive winning seasons at one point. They have a culture of fan support that spans generations, where the identity and the claim to fame of the community is the basketball team. Winning a game in the NCAA tournament is worth $2 million and counting for your league. In Murray State has sent three teams to the round of 32 in the NCAA tournament since 2010. They're actually one of eight teams that are not in the future Power Five or Big East. Those eight schools are Gonzaga, Wichita, San Diego State, Dayton will give them 2020 because of COVID, St. Louis, VCU, Northern Iowa, and Murray State. Another thing to keep in mind is that the NBC needs CBS to renew the contract post Loyola, as that is the difference from having your final on CBS in front of 1 million viewers and having it on ESPN in front of 300,000. And one way to hook the casual viewer is by having a top 25 ranking next to one of those teams. And Murray State has entered the OBC final with a top 25 ranking twice in the past decade. So if I'm running the NBC, I'd use Murray State to remedy the loss of Loyola on the court and use UIC and Texas Arlington to remedy the league's demographic issues for the university presidents. And for the fourth school, I'd do a little bit of both by adding Northern Kentucky, a good program, and a top 30 market.